thank you for this time. Open our hearts, our minds, our understanding to receive your word. Make our hearts and our minds ready. God, break up every fallow ground that it would go into a deep, rich soil that it would spring up in abundance. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you were here last week, Pastor Mike brought a word. I don't know. It was amazing. If you didn't, if you weren't able to see it, uh, be here. You could watch it on YouTube. Um, he was telling us about the book of Psalms, right, and how it's a soundtrack to our lives. It's like a prayer book. Anyone was here? Do you remember that? It was, it was really good, and it, it provides the background music to our life. And the title was, I Pray You Fail, which was, whoo. It changed everything. I, I guess I was praying for my enemies all wrong because I had the wrong enemies. Y'all go back and watch it. It was, it was, it was uh, excellent. So it was, I pray you fail. But this week, I just kind of want to piggyback on that. And uh, our subject for this time is called, I pray you ponder. I pray you ponder. Uh, we're going into uh, a scripture that's going to help us with our pondering. Pondering, you know, to meditate, to ruminate, to consider or examine carefully, to ponder. Uh, we're going into Psalms 124. Psalms 124. And this is a thanksgiving hymn for a community. It's for, it's for, it's for, it's not, a lot of times is David's doing a solo thing. This is for a community. And I love this because David expects a response from the people as he is saying this Psalms. And uh, it's good. It's good for the people of God to testify together. Uh, we had to take the testimonies away a little bit because, you know, saints get a little carried away and on a two minutes. So we had to kind of move away from that. But it's so good to be able to testify of the Lord collectively. Let's turn to um, Psalm 124. It should also be on our screen. I'm reading from the New uh, Standard Revised Version. And it says, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. I love this about David. He said, let Israel say, not just me. But it had, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, let Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. When their anger was kindled against us and the flood would have swept us away, the torrent would have gone over us, then over us would have gone raging waters. Bless be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird. Somebody say a bird. From the snare of the hunters. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let the people of God say amen. amen. What a wonderful verse to ponder over. Now, let me just get a read of the room. Has anybody else in the room reached the age where you have to start writing things down? Anyone? This is young, both young and old. Have you gotten to that place where you can no longer trust yourself? Remember, you used to be able to be like, yeah, right, got it, Tuesday, I'll be there. Yep, yep, write it down. And then you, all of a sudden, people call on you like, where you at? I thought we was, anybody else not trust themselves anymore? You have to write things down. Uh, it's because, you know, and because of this, I'm trying to lean into more mindfulness, more reflective practices, more like, you know, sitting and just being. Anybody else is trying to uh, lean into these things? Because I believe one of the enemy's tactics, we you know we have an enemy. One of the enemy's tactics against us is to keep us so busy that we don't take the time right. to stop and reflect. Anybody else find that true? Yeah. It's like you're living in a whirlwind. Yeah. And from this thing to that thing to that thing, your weekends is full, your, your day is full, you're picking up kids, you're dropping off people, you're going here, you're going there. Anybody else live in a whirlwind? That's how I kind of feel. I'm just getting tossed and turned around. My schedule controls me. I don't control it. I'm just whipped around, right? Amen. Another tactic... 
that he that the enemy uses in this sense is that if he could keep you busy, if he could keep you busy, he can make you forgetful. He could keep you busy enough. You'll begin to be forgetful. And that's why we have, you know, a lot of our calendars get jacked up because we're so busy that we forget. We forget. We forget who we're supposed to meet. We forget where we're supposed to go, right? We forget. This is the enemy's tactics. And there is a condition that a lot of Christians can get. There is a Christian. We should do like one of those uh, commercials. Be like, have you experienced this as a Christian? And they have a little commercial. Because one thing that Christians, we tend to, uh, uh, I could call it a disease we, we tend to pick up, is called spiritual amnesia. Or spiritual memory loss. We tend to forget. We beg and we ask God to do things as though God has never done anything for us ever. As though God has never made a way out of no way. We tend to forget. We just have spiritual. It's, it's a something that, we, that comes over us. And I love this. And, and I want y'all to uh, hang with me because we're about to read some scripture. Y'all, y'all good? Y'all ready? Ready? God, I love the word of God. It's so good. Um, so I need y'all to share in this, in this joy with me. Uh, God, God always warns about forgetting. God is always warning us to, about forgetting. There's a great scripture in Deuteronomy. Don't get scared when you look at it. It's going to be fine. All right. Deuteronomy 8. This is so great. These people are about to go into the promised land. He's, we've done all these things. We're, God is like, I've learned, we're, they're right on the edge of going into the promised land. Of all the things God could talk about, God could have talked about a lot of things, but this is what God said. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinance, and his statutes that I am commanding you today. When you have, check it out, eating your field and have built fine houses to live in them, when you're herds and your flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself. Forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness and the arid wasteland and the poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from a flint rock. He led you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you. And in the end, to do you what? Do not say to yourself, huh, my power and the might of my own hand has gotten me this well. But remember the Lord your God, who for he has for it is he who gives you the power to get well. Somebody say power. So that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is going to do, as he is doing today. If you do not forget the Lord your God and follow other gods to serve and worship them, I I solemnly warn you, today you shall surely perish. Somebody say, whoo, we got through. We got through the Bible reading. It was great. I thought it was worth it, though, just to emphasize how much God is placing emphasis on not forgetting. When you finally get what you pray for, when God finally came through, you got your boo. Do not forget the Lord your God. Because the Lord takes forgetting seriously. Because forgetting can lead to ungratefulness. Anybody know that to be true? You have somebody come at you sideways after you done done a lot of stuff for them. And they acting brand new. We were like, now I know you. I know you lying. Not all them rides I gave you. Not all that money. You know, have you ever had someone, it feels a little ungrateful when people forget and act brand new that you done did stuff for them. How, so how, how might you think the Lord feels in, the, in those situations toward us? I know you not crying over, yeah, you know, okay, I'm not going to speak for the Lord. But the cure to ungratefulness is spiritual pondering. 
pondering. Spiritual pondering cures ungratefulness. Um, the word says in Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not God's benefits. It's important not to forget. So in our passage today, David gives us a phrase that we should all ponder on. This is something we should all take a moment to think about. And that phrase is, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Period. Oh, I guess that's a question mark. Question mark, period. Where would we be? Let's break it down. Point number one, he said, if it had not been. And that's just us realizing our positionality. If it had not been, you could just stop, full stop right there. True humility is admitting we are nothing without God. That, that, takes, that takes a lot of awareness to realize literally there's nothing I can do without the grace, without the strength, without the power of God in my life. Salvation starts at this posture. We keep, I said I'm becoming a phrase that I'm, I'm saying a lot in my older age. We have nothing to bring to the table when it comes to salvation. And the, the sooner we start realizing this, it's the sooner that we can really accept how wonderful the grace of God is. We have nothing to bring to the table as, as far as our salvation is concerned. Jesus paid it all. We could not pay the price. We owed a debt we could not pay. It was too big. It was too much. It's like, you know, when your kids bring you stuff, and you're like, you know, we want to play store, and they bring, like, rocks to pay for or whatever. You're like, baby, this, this car, you can't buy no car on rocks, right? It's the same as with our salvation. What we had to bring to the table could not pay the debt that was owed, our sin debt. We bring nothing. That salvation starts here, admitting, God, I don't have it. And that's hard for a lot of people who have, you know, feel like they self-made. That's why people take great delight in following rules and the laws. You ever like, you know, Pastor Mike's always battling with the Hebrew Israelites because they're like wanting to follow the rules and the laws and be like, why y'all want to be under the law so bad? Because people who follow a lot of rules and strict, they can't do that, makes them feel good once you check that off. You, oh, I did that, I did that, I did that, and I did that. I must be good. I must be righteous. I must have did all. You ain't doing what I'm doing. You see how that worked? But true posture of humility admits, God, I ain't got it. I don't have enough strength. I don't have enough uh, smarts. I, don't, I can't manipulate a situation enough. I don't have enough charm. Some of y'all depend on your charm. You know, I got that game. I can talk you into it. Yeah. You ain't got enough charm. You ain't got enough game. We don't have it. If it had not been. And yes, we believe in affirmations. We're not saying that. We're just walking around saying, I'm filthy rags before the Lord. You know, it's not like a self-deprivation thing. We love our affirmation. Anybody got good affirmations that you? We love a good affirmation. We love that you're beautiful and you're powerful and you is smart and you is kind and you is. We love that. But it's also admitting after your affirmation that it's only because of God. It's only, it's only God. I literally can't do it without every breath. You ever just think about the breath, what it takes for us to, to be alive as a human being, the breath that you take, the way that your brain operates for just for your hands and your, your feet to move, that the things that go on your body without you even having to think about it. I don't have it. God, I'm nothing without you. That's where salvation starts. And that's why a lot of salvation is sometimes a little questionable because I don't know if we're starting there. We're starting at God bless me. And we're not starting at, you know what, actually I couldn't do none of this without you. Right? Anything we do or that we are has to be God breathed. 
God has to breathe on it. We're just, we're not, remember when he formed Adam and, the, and it was just a, a, a thing until God, what? God, you have to breathe on it. This project at work, you have to breathe on it. My teaching, you have to breathe on My marriage, my relationship, God, you have to breathe on it. Anything that I'm doing, you have to breathe on it. And it has to be spirit-fueled, not flesh-fueled. See, flesh-fueled, man, I got to do it. I got to be there. I got to, they can't do it without me. I got to make it happen. I'm the one. I mean, you have lived that life, been there, done that, got the T-shirt, and you're tired, need to lay down. <laughs> right? Spirit fueled. Uh, David said, I would have lost heart if I would not have believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. See, I don't have to fight against these real enemies. Pastor Mike gave us a good delineation between haters and no real enemies that are really systems and things that really want to kill you. <laughs> that's, that's those spiritual enemies, the demonic side of things that don't want you to make a choice for God. Right? Real enemies. That's what we're talking about. We don't have it to fight against those real enemies, those systems, those powers, those wickedness in high places. How are you fighting a demon? And, and with this, with these. How you fighting systems? How you fighting people who are making decisions that you don't even know about? Right? It has to be spirit-fueled. God breathed. God breathed. So if it had not been, and then he goes on to say our, part, our second, our second uh, point, for the Lord on our side, realizing our advantage. Somebody say, I got an advantage. Somebody say, we have an advantage. We have an advantage. We have an advantage. Did you know that you can use the, the Psalms not, all, not just as a prayer book or a, um, a soundtrack, but it, it can also be your playbook. Amen. Somebody say your playbook. I got any ex-athletes in here? Anybody who likes to watch sports or anybody, you know, I'm not talking about football season anymore right now. I'm taking a break. I need a mental health break from the San Francisco 49ers. But um, and that's here nor there. Okay, sorry. Um, but if you watch sports, play sports, some people, I'm sorry if it's not a sports thing, or like they talk about sports a lot here. I'm sorry, just work with me. In sports, everybody needs a playbook. Without a playbook, you're just walking around in chaos, everybody doing what they want to do. It's like playground. Anybody can play playground ball or back uh, street football or anybody can do that. It's just a bunch of people running around crazy doing, doing whatever they want. Talking about I'm open all the time, right? <laughs> That's chaos. But we need a playbook uh, uh, against the enemy schemes. See, God has a plan for your life. We've heard that so many times, but the enemy also has a plan for your life. Has all those gifts and talents? He's like, oh, yeah, I can use that real good in my kingdom. We could cause a lot of havoc in my kingdom, right? So um, God had in the enemy strategy, if you look at, how you doing, brother? If you look at um, Psalms 2, that, that Psalms 123, the second through the fifth verse, check out the enemy strategies. Nashar, if you could put back up the first original slide with, the, with all the scripture. The first strategy is, if you look at it, the enemy wants to attack. The enemy wants to swallow up. Swallow your enemy wants to have flared anger against you. Engulfing floods. Anybody ever felt this in your life? Anybody ever felt this in your life? You felt attacked and things are just swallowing you up and you feel like floods are, are washing over you. And I love torrents because torrents are flash floods. Things that are unexpected. You didn't even plan for it. It just comes to sweep you away. Raging waters and being swept away. Anybody ever felt like that before? Has your life ever felt like I don't know what's going on? I don't know where did this come from? Out of the blue, attacks, I don't know, I'm overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what else to do. This is what the enemy's plan is. Yeah, yeah. And this is just like in sports. This is when the enemy tries to get into your head talking. Anybody ever play against somebody who just talked the whole time? Yeah. Any athletes, anybody ever play or just on the street or something? Or 
and recess. I don't know. I'm just trying to. My 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 husband is. He's so funny, as you guys know. But he had a gift of getting into people's heads when he's playing against them, just talking trash, just the whole time, gets them totally off their game. Right? This is what the enemy does to us. He don't have much power. I just want to make an announcement that Jesus has all power. All power in heaven and earth belongs to the Lord. You know we don't got no rivals, really. You know you know the song, God has no rival, God has no equal. He's just like an annoying nuisance in your life, trying to get you thrown off, right? So he talks, try to get you rattled. Anybody ever heard that before? You can't do it. What you think you're doing? You know you faking, you imposter syndrome, look at you. It's never gonna work. Oh, y'all, y'all know these? This is the talk. This is just like you on a team and they talking trash to you. And you like, oh, I guess we can't win. <laughs> right? This is what the enemy does. He wants to get into your head and get you out of your game. But I have such a wonderful announcement to make today that we are on the winning side. Do you understand who you're playing for? Do you understand the team you're on? This is just like being a bench player on the all-star team. You don't have to do much. They, all you just do is warm up, and then you just have a seat, and we'll take, the t- we'll take the game from here, right? You literally have the advantage. It's like being on a stacked tug-of-war team. Anybody have a tug-of-war team? And there's a bunch of little scrawny skimpies on one side and a bunch of muscles on the other side. This is how we look in the spirit. We have the advantage. How many believe it? Do you believe it? Tell yourself, say, I have the advantage. I am on the winning team. Y'all, y'all don't believe it. Y'all, we are on the winning team. I, I would be excited about that. Maybe I'm just, I, I just, I love being on the winning team. I'm not going to go on any flashbacks right now of what it would be like to be on a winning Super Bowl team. Um, but that's here nor there. So I'm just going to keep on. There was a story in the Bible about a man who got all distressed about what was going on. And the prophet said, I want you to look out. And, and he could see in the spirit that there was more for us than was against us. There was angels and all kind of things surrounding the place. Do you know that there is more for you than against you in the spirit realm? We have more. We have the advantage. We are on the winning side. We have a God. It's better than nationwide is on your side. Nationwide. On your side. (laughs) We got something better than nationwide. This changes everything if you really think about it. I know I'm making jokes, but it changes everything. This changes your perspective about anything. This gives you the boldness and the confidence to go through things. When you start hearing that chirp back, you chirp back to it. We got to come to the place of spiritual maturity. We start talking back to the, oh, okay, you got stuff to say, devil. Turn to the end of the Bible. Where are you going to be at? What's going on with you? Oh, yeah, oh, you, okay, you want to talk about, uh, remember what happened to you in heaven? Like, you, we got to start talking back to the enemy. We have confidence. We have security. We are on the winning side. Somebody say amen. Amen. Okay, last point is number three. Where if it had not been for the Lord on our side, this is the question. This is the question of the day. Where would I be? This is where I pray you ponder. Where would I be? This is the place from which praise and worship flows. Amen? Amen. When you start pondering the direction of your life, where it would be without the Lord. Where would I be, Jesus? Where would I be? This is where we start using our divine um our divine uh, uh, imagination, right? Where would I be, God? Look at all the routes my life could have taken, could have taken. What are what all the choices that I made? Where would I be? Even when you got into, anybody got caught and you was in a bad situation? Anybody got consequences that caught up to them? Don't be ashamed. Look, I got one. I only got one witness. I'll raise my hand. 
How many of you, you got caught up? Anybody got caught up before? Yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I got caught up. Yeah, it was me. I did it. Yeah, right. I love verse 7. Verse 7 said, uh, we have escaped like a bird from the snares of a hunter. The snare is broken. So even when the enemy thought he had me, even when I got caught and I was wrong, look what the Lord did. He made me be like a bird and just fly away. Anybody got that testimony? The snare is broken. The enemy was like, oh, yeah, I got him now. Got him, caught him lying, caught him too. Okay, yeah, I did. But broke the snare and I'm free. How many glad to be free in the house? I'm glad to be free. The enemy thought he had me. Anybody got that testimony? I just need a few good old people to have a Baptist fit with me. That the enemy thought he had me. But I got away. Tell your neighbor I got away. Come on, tell somebody else, I got away. I got away. I got away. That's enough to shout right there. See, when we start thinking about where would I be, I said this is the place from where your worship comes from. I don't have to say, oh, come on, guys, lift your hands. Oh, come on. No, you start thinking about that thing. Where would I be? You know how many different places you could be sitting right now if it had not been? Some of us should have been dead. We should have been locked up for life. We could have been walking the streets. If it had not been. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Where would I be? I want to congratulate each and every one of you because you have successfully survived the worst days of your life. Can you give a God a praise right there? Look at you, sitting in the house of the Lord, alive and well, breathing. Woo! That's where worship comes from. God, if you did, if you did not do it, where would I be, God? Where would I be? So this is why God is saying, document it. Remember I said we, we got to start writing stuff down now? We at that age. This is why we got to start documenting things. Write it down. God was so intentional in the Old Testament about memorials, about markers, about um, altars. He would always want to build an altar, build one right here before you cross over to, so that the generations past will know this is what happened right here. We have to take note of the times when God delivers us from adversity. Recalling these blessings will give us confidence in God's faithfulness and power for future troubles. If you have a good memory, a good spiritual memory, nothing can rattle you. Oh, I've seen this before. Minister Yolanda preached a powerful word about, oh, we've been this way before. Oh, we already been here. Oh, you say, oh, devil, you trying it again. Oh, good thing God already, I, that's all right. I've seen this. Wait, wait, rewinding, we, we rewinding a show. I've seen this episode so many times. A good spiritual memory and you document it. You got to get that journal out. Get them phone, iPhones, uh, so you can go back and remember, oh, I've already been this way before. God has always been faithful. There's no need for me to get sad and depressed and wondering and nervous and worry. That's the state the enemy wants to keep us in. I'm tired of listening to a liar. I'm not doing it anymore. Not listening to a, a, a person whose name is the father of lies. I wouldn't do it in real life. Somebody liar just coming to me. I'd be like, boy, bye. <laughs> Last thing. How do you get the Lord on your side? When everybody thinks God is on their side. <laughs> this is a good thing to think about. Everybody, think about it. Everybody in the political system right now thinks God is on their side. Every side believes they are fighting for the Lord's causes. Think about it. Everybody think the Lord is on their side. <laughs> they don't look. Don like they daddy. That's what Jesus said. 
Jesus had some cold lines. Y'all got to read what Jesus said. He told them one time, he said, you're lying just like your daddy. They was like, who's our daddy? The, the father of lies. Jesus, y'all better look at the, the clapbacks of the Bible. We should make it. Jesus. Woo. So everybody thinks that God is on their side, but there is a definite pattern in the Bible that traces God's heart. Okay, this one is a, a it's, don't get scared. It's just, we're going to put the, it's Psalms. 146. Some of y'all didn't read your Bibles this week, so I'm helping you out. You get all your Bible reading done today. All right. Psalms 146. This is the heart of God. How do we know God is on our side? Uh, He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the justice. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. I pray they fail. I pray they fail. Do you want to know if you're on the Lord's side? You want to know how to get God on your side? Follow the God who is a liberator, who was always on the side of the oppressed. There used to be an old song that said, where do you stand? Where do you stand? Who's on the Lord's side? I I started on the soprano. I don't know why I went soprano. That that was my, yeah. They used to old song. Anybody remember old black? Where do you stand? Who's on the Lord's side? I'm on... No, 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 no. Okay. Sorry, me and Lauren, we could just have our own little thing over here. Um, where do you stand? This is where the Lord is going to be. You ever want to look, you want to follow where the Lord, where is God? God is everywhere, but he always going to be on the side of the oppressed. He will always be on the side of justice. He will always be looking out for the marginalized. He will always be looking up for the foreigners and the prisoners and the ones who are bowed down and fatherless and widowed. This is where you will always find God. So if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, if you have ever found yourself on this side, then you ain't good company. Because the Lord is our side, is on our side. Verse 8 said, for the last thing for, I know I said last thing about three times, but this is really the last thing. The fourth point is realizing the source of our help. Yes, yes. The source of our help. Verse 8 says, our help is in the name of the Lord, yes, yes. maker of heaven and earth. I don't know who else you can depend on, but someone who actually literally made the heavens and the earth. I don't know nobody else with greater credentials than that. Our help is not in us. It's not in our strength. It's not in our ingenuity. It's not in your smarts. It's not in your connections. It's not in your networking. We got to know this. Romans 8, uh, 31 says, what shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not even spare his own son, but freely gave him up to give us all things. Who is this God that is the source of our help? The biblical name for God is Jehovah Saba. It means the Lord, our warrior. Y'all think y'all like the warriors? No, we got the real warrior. The Lord, our warrior. The Psalms Note that God's people do not win these battles by human strength and strategy. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's not by our strength, but it's by the Spirit, says the Lord. We have a God who is actually a warrior and will fight for us. You know, all those unseen things that we can't get to, those, those demons that we, can't, that we can't really just, you know, there's a whole other invisible realm. That's even realer than this this realm. Y'all believe that, right? Our God is a spirit, and they that worship God must worship God in spirit and truth, that we serve a God that is an invisible being, but that invisible realm is so real, right? This is where God is fighting for us. This is why Pastor Mike, when he was talking, we don't have to resort to human harms. 
We don't have to resort to violence. We don't have to knock somebody out. We ain't got to slap them down, right? Because we have a God who is fighting for us. Ooh, it got quiet. We have a God who is fighting for us. Anybody believe that glad about it? I ain't going to let y'all get away with that quiet. Maybe y'all was taking it in. Like, I don't know if you ever been the little cousin or the little sister or brother and you got back up at home and you all you had to do would be, I'm going to get my brother. <laughs> like, that is how we, 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 you know, we don't have it, but we got back up. We have an advantage. We said, the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You fighting the wrong enemy. It's not the person next to you. It's not the person at home. It's what we're, we're, we're wrestling against. We're struggling against rulers, against authorities, against powers of the dark world, against spiritual forces in heavenly places or high places. We have a God that says in Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. Isn't that good news? That should take a whole burden off your whole, yes, the yoke off your neck. Yes. We have a God who is actively fighting for you, not to harm individuals. As Pastor Mike has said, we can't pray, God smite them. That was a whole, we, we, that's another covenant. We can, <laughs> but we are asking God to make them fail. Every scheme, everything that they try to contrive, that it just won't work. Yeah. God will mess. There's so many stories on, but I wish I had time. Yeah, I'm not gonna hold y'all too long. There's a story where God, um, when the Israelites were crossing um, the Red Sea, that God made the the wheels of the chariot come off. Like what? What kind of y'all should read that on your own? The wheels broke. What kind of God do we serve? A God who will fight. That's a little petty too, God. I see what you was doing. Like it. All right, so. Um, as we close, these are just some reflection questions that I want you to think about. And these are also, if you come to the village, we will really be going deeper into uh, some of these questions. These are things, it's the um, reflection questions. Um, it's called, um, today we're going to call them pondering questions. Things to ponder, all right? Things to ponder. I want you to take it back with you. Take a picture of it. Do something. But I want you to think about what does this psalm tell us about God? How can this psalm reassure us in the faces of struggles and fears? What can this psalm tell us about what would have happened without God? Have you ever felt like you escaped lightly from a, disasters, a disaster? If so, how? They, the, we had a saying, uh, you don't look like what you've been through. Anybody? That's a, that's a whole test me. Look, I, you don't look, look. You don't know my story. Look, if you all knew what the, we escaped. Hallelujah. Five, have you ever felt like God was on your side when you were under attack? And then lastly, what false views of God have you had? These are good things to ponder on over the week. Not just taking the word and hearing it and be like, church was good. But they're actually taking it, thinking on it, ruminating, musing over, meditating over. If you come on Wednesday, we will have extended times of just walking it and going through these things. Amen. Let's just have everyone stand. God, we thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your word. God's word brings life. God, God's word brings wholeness to us. God, we thank you that you have been on our side. It was a collective hymn. It was for us to all look around at each other and say, man, if it had not been for God. Like you got the same testimony I got. Wow, look at God, what did God do in your life? God did that for you. Look, God did that for me too. This is a place where we could bear witness to the goodness of God collectively. The same God that did it for me will do it for you. The same God that did it for you will do it for me. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? 
So God, we just want to offer gratefulness. Can we just have a moment of worship, a moment of gratefulness in your own way? Just have a moment to say, God, I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Some, some situations I didn't even realize it was you until now. God, I didn't even see your hand in the moment, but it was you all along. It was you all along guiding me. Your footsteps were right beside me when I thought you left me. You were carrying me. God, I thank you. Thank you, God. And God, please forgive us for all the times when we just counted it up as coincidence or luck or fate or I just it just all happened all of a sudden. Lord, we want to give you all the glory and the credit for everything you have done for us. Uh, we admit as a community that we are nothing without you. Nothing happens in our lives unless you breathe into us. So God, we acknowledge you and we honor you. We give you the glory that's due your name. This is the place where praise will flow from our hearts. No one will have to prompt me to worship you. I came with a worship in my heart and in my soul because I remember where I would have been if it was not for you. God, activate our divine imaginations. Help us to see and realize if your grace had not been on us, if your protection, if your, if your awareness around us, if it had not been for you, oh God, where would we be? God, increase our gratefulness. Increase our faith. Breathe into us. Come on, will you just ask God to breathe? Breathe, God. Breathe into our plans. Breathe into our lives. We need you. We're saying collectively that we need you. Come on, can you say that out of your mouth? God, I need you. God, I need you. I need you. I, I need you. I don't have it. I can't do it without you. I can't do life without you. God, I need you. We are crying collectively, letting you know how much we love you and we need you. Is there, is there?